when someone is living a spiritual way of life, losing their mind is gaining themselves. When someone's living an intellectual way of life, losing their mind is losing all the ideas that they have. And their ideas of how it should be and how it goes. And, you know, I want to go on this trip, but I don't have the money or the time, so I'm going to go on the trip when I have the money or the time. That's a, a basic equation of 10 years from now, I'll see you right here in the life as it is now, because you're never going to get beyond your mind. Inspiring someone to go beyond the concepts of what they think, how they know themselves, who they believe themselves to be, meaning viscerally responding, not intellectually. So how many of you say, I'm going on a diet, or I'm not going to date her anymore, or I'm done doing that? And the first time you get an inkling to like eat that brownie, or feeling sexy, or I'll do it tomorrow. Because we can get to the circumference of the most maximum status of what we know, but stepping just beyond that requires an awareness that most people don't have. That's why our world is waking up right now to sort of an intellectual spirituality. Because an ontological spirituality means viscerally feeling it and jumping anyway. And when one is willing to feel, Lonnie, to feel whatever it is and jump anyway, then you wake up. You can't not wake up. And what you wake up to is a moment past your own most maximum mind thought, which is always a miracle. Why? Because totality exists, and we're stuck in the confines of what we think. One in six and a half billionth. So can you imagine one second beyond what you know has to feel miraculous just because it's on the other side of six and a half billion? There's you and six and a half billion. Can you imagine, no matter how brilliant you are, the other side of you is six and a half billion yous? No matter how brilliant you are, it's going to be kind of cool to join in, a in six and a half billion others. And that the opportunity of that sway is exactly what life is about, outside of the cultural norm. What we're born for is to spiritually evolve. And spiritually means grow enough ego that we can see ourselves so that we can lose ourselves on purpose. Get connected in a honeymoon stage of who we think we are enough to who we think we are so that when we find out we might lose us, we're scared so badly that we can't make any action so that we can take an action so that we can actually grow beyond the mind that we set up in the honeymoon stage of who we thought we were in order to keep ourselves safe so we could get that no safety needs to be, which is, spirit, which is a spiritual evolving. Until you get so evolved that you are the ethers. You are not, you are, you are not the you that stands here. You're the you around the you that stands here. You are not the six feet that is. You're the 60 feet that is with the six feet that is. And you can't get this until you're in front of a firm loss. And how many of you are betting your lives on no more loss? Inspiring one to go beyond their most maximum total self means just the moment after your last breath. And most people won't get this in this lifetime or the next lifetime or the lifetime after. But those of you that are ready to play, get inspired. Those of you that are ready to play actually go, hmm, there might be something to that. Probably not, but because it's not believable. It's not conceivable, it's not understandable, it's not doable, it's not retainable, it's not agreeable. The only way to enter totality is to be willing to risk the loss of the total sum of you. To do what can't be done because it can't be done. And the mind goes, but I don't want to be homeless. Or if I do that, what will happen? And that's the ante. Which is why you have to have a guide, because without a guide, you're right. It doesn't make any sense, because your mind would say, I guarantee you, your mind would say, oh, I'm going to go jump out of an airplane, because it knows it can handle it. It's jumping out of an airplane when you can't handle it. If you can handle it, it's another day. It's doing what can't be done all day long, every day, no matter what. How many of you have that muscular structure developed? Yeah, right. That's great. And in this lifetime, my commitment is to give you a taste of that opportunity.